Back in 2022, Matt Rees managed to clock a five minute PB, running 2.24 and 19 seconds at the Valencia Marathon. And having already run 2.29 three times and a handful of low 230s over the years, it's time to dive in and look at Matt's last eight weeks in the build up to Valencia to see what made a difference. And with Matt's sights already on a sub 2.20 marathon later this year at some point, it's gonna be exciting to go through this 2.24 training, see what he really, really did well and see if he implements that moving forward into this year. We'll have some talking points at the end, but before all of that, we're going to dive in and go through his eight weeks. So here we go then, eight weeks out from Valencia. So we're going to do these in two week batches. We'll kick start with the Monday and he did an easy run there, 40 minutes and a nice low heart rate. So again, I've marked that as light green. For color coding reference, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, light green is very easy. White, I've just left there the sessions. And then if it's a darker green like here, it's where he's putting a little bit of a harder effort and we'll cover that shortly. Uh, Tuesday is a double threshold day and you'll see a few of these as we go through five by six minutes off 60 seconds in the morning and then 10 by three minutes in the evening. Uh, Wednesday is an easy day and he's already mentioning here that he is uh, struggling a bit with his right calf or he made a note. Now there are lots of notes in his Strava. He's very meticulous at documenting how he feels. Kit he was using in this build up, all of that stuff. I've kept in the notes that I feel are relevant for this uh, and I've removed some of them that aren't. Otherwise, the spreadsheet would be absolutely huge. Uh, but heart rate here was 124 beats a minute. Thursday was a session, 30K. If you just read here, uh, he was hoping it would feel easier. It didn't feel smooth, um, but stress and the body, um, but stress the body and adapt. And he noted what his fueling was. Uh, he had rice and jam four hours before, Morton gels, uh, lots to work on, stomach issues, but he managed to get the run done. 18.67 miles, 30K, uh, 558 per mile, heart rate 162. So that's a a solid long run on the Thursday there. He traveled on the Friday by the looks of it and he went to run Amsterdam Marathon with Kelly. So he did a double on the Saturday, did a park run uh, where he ran 1606, heart rate 162, and then he put a steady run in uh, of uh, just over an hour there in the evening. So that's a steady day. That's why I've marked it as um, uh, a steady effort and then he's run Amsterdam with Kelly four hours one minute that was a massive marathon PB for Kelly and he ran that with her so that week he clocked 88.8 .8 miles or 142.9k I'm going to assume the Monday was a travel day back because there was no run mark there and he then marked it off as back to it. So a nice low heart rate there, 133, five miles uh, on the Tuesday. He then did a double threshold on the Wednesday. So again, five by six minutes here, and then 10 by three minutes here. TM means treadmill. So he did the evening one on the treadmill. So that's great. He then hit the trails on the Thursday for a nice easy run. Look at that, 130 beats a minute. So nice and relaxed. Elevate a thousand foot of elevation gain in eight miles. So that's the type of run that gets you strong legs. 30 K on the Friday practicing fueling. There were some notes on that one, but I didn't think they were relevant to the video, so I cut them out. 18.65 miles, 5.45 per mile, uh, one hour 47, heart rate 165. So three beats a minute higher than the one the week before, but if you notice, 5.45 per mile, 5.58. So clearly a big increase in pace there. He then rests on the uh, Saturday and Sunday, totaling 50.2 miles or 80.79K. So a bit of a difference there from the mileage between weeks eight and week seven, 80 on week eight, 50 on week seven, and that doesn't change with six and five, and I'll show you why now. 16 by K off 60 seconds on the Monday, so he really did a great session there, really putting in some good volume here. Uh, Vaporfly 2 felt uh, controlled but calves tired in the final reps. 14.43 miles, 6.05 per mile. Uh, heart rate 161. So that's a good session there. 16 by a K off 60 seconds. Grass recovery on the Tuesday. Took two recovery days here. So grass recovery, heart rate 122, lovely and relaxed. Uh, and then he's got buggy trails uh, where he's running with his son in the buggy, 126 uh, beats a minute. Uh, and then 90s music, so he's having a bit of a disco to himself there. Nearly 40 minute run, 129. So very, very, very recovery uh, orientated miles for him there. Then there's a big one on the Thursday, three by 5K. And he's put the splits here. That is a solid, solid workout. Um, covers 10 miles, 535 per mile, heart rate 170. 
and then he's marked down nearly a mile, three quarters of a mile, jog back to the car, heart rate 133. So good session there. Not massive volume, but quality. Really good quality there on the Thursday. Friday, he does another nine mile loop uh, with uh, his son and Kelly. Um, nine miles, pretty much. Uh, heart rate 117, very much, again, recovery orientated. Rest day, because he travels for his secret marathon. He labeled it as a secret marathon. He went off to Dublin uh, to do a little experiment. I talked to him about this. Uh, what he wanted to do was basically run relatively controlled for 25k and then see if he could kick on so he wasn't trying to do anything at marathon effort as such in the first part he just wanted to get a good stimulus out of this put in a good hard effort over the distance get used to the distance it was a bit of an experiment for him he put his hands up at the time and said this is an experiment and it's it is an experiment that clearly paid off. Uh, first half split 116, second half split 114, well nearly 115 there. He ran a 231 at Dublin. Uh, so you can see here, practicing homemade gels. This was his chance basically to run through race day, simulate race day. Um, so he practiced with the gels, managed 150 carbs overall, but nothing after 32K. Caffeine tablet at the start and just after halfway. Relaxed until 25K and pushed on tired legs. Really happy with the discipline and control. It was a very disciplined performance and a really good effort too. 167 heart rate. Uh, yeah, so that was a great one. And that totaled him at 80.8 miles or 130k for the week. And if we move on to week four, this is why it dips because uh, he rests Monday and Tuesday. One of those days will be a travel back. And then he puts on Wednesday back to it. He's got a double day. And uh, yours truly makes an appearance in the evening uh, with an easy run. His heart rate there, 133 and 129 on those. So good, solid, double, easy day back into things. Then he does a five-mile tempo, average 520 per mile, heart rate 174. Uh, and I believe he does, uh, the full distance, I should say, is six miles. So he puts a little bit of a warm-up before it, um, 529 per mile overall. Uh, but within that, there's a five mile tempo. He does a cool down and then he does a recovery later, a recovery run later, 124 heart rate. So that's a good double day, good workout in the morning, recovery run in the evening. Relax trails in on the Friday, 135 heart rate, uh, 1,100 foot of elevation. So he's doing some serious climbing there. And then he does a steady run on the Saturday, steady, and then pick up in the Outfly version one. Uh, again, he's put some kits here, uh, the saw long sleeve t-shirt and a gel before starting. 10 miles, 547 per mile, uh, 165 beats a minute for the heart rate, so another solid effort there. Rests on the Sunday and clocks 45.8 miles or 73.7K. And these next two weeks are great, some really big weeks. He's got this first four weeks out of the way. This is now the final four weeks, two more big weeks before a taper savage session but loved it 5k warm-up 13 by k on off very short cooldown uh, some incredible k times there on off um, and his average pace there so yeah he covered 19 miles 168 beats a minute heart rate absolutely unreal brilliant session again more quality and volume there Trail recovery, 132 beats a minute heart rate, single day, and then a double day here uh, for um, more easy trails in the morning, 127 heart rate, top up with me. So we did an evening run on the Wednesday, 131 heart rate, covered, uh, well, ran for an hour. So that was a good easy day. And then he does eight by a K off 90 seconds, average 303, uh, obviously a headwind tailwind situation there, but that is a really flipping fast, uh, some K reps there, way faster than marathon pace, good quality, average heart rate 150 for the whole run, so that's amazing. Evening run the next day on the Friday, uh, 131 beats a minute heart rate, and then 145 the next day. I nearly marked that as steady, uh, but it's a trail effort, and I'm sure he was going out there to run easy, so I've given him the benefit of the doubt there and marked it as easy. And then he did a decent, he hasn't labeled what that one was. I believe, if I remember rightly, he kind of progressed it down, but it was nearly 11 miles, 6.03 per mile, 152 beats a minute heart rate. So he clocked 79.5 miles that week, or 100. 27.9k and then we pick up I think this is the biggest run at uh, the biggest week of the block three weeks out easy and strides to start the week 138 beats a minute heart rates so are nice and relaxed uh, he then puts aborted stiff ankle so he obviously attempted a double threshold day here I'm going to assume maybe um, he covered eight miles, uh, 8.38 miles, uh, 627 per mile heart rate 147 so he covered some good ground but whatever he was doing he aborted it 
But then in the evening, uh, he did two by two miles off three minutes and ran for 7.02 miles, 614, 157. I think I remember talking to him about this at the time when we had our easy run catch up. He said, I think he said that he went home and did some massage gun work and stretching and stuff and it all kind of eased itself off. So that's why he attempted the run in the evening. Um, so that's what that was. I think. Uh, Buggy Miles with his son in the morning, 119 beats a minute heart rate, nice and relaxed. And again, some miles with me in the evening, covering an hour, 132 beats a minute. So a nice double easy day there. And then a monster session, a monster session. I hated every second of that, but it's done. 8K warm up, 4 by 6K of hell, with 1K of hell between each. He averaged 528 per mile. Um, yeah, 5.28 per mile for the 6Ks, which was his marathon pace. So he nailed it there. 21.92 miles covered, 5.50 per mile for the run, 160 beats a minute average heart rate. Brilliant workout. Regardless of it feeling good or not, that is insane. Friday, uh, easy run, 119 beats a minute heart rate. Then he did a cross country, a quick warm up there, nearly two miles, and then he came sixth in the inter regionals um, uh, cross country, uh, 5.23 per mile on grass, heart rate 177. That's the highest you're going to see it uh, in this training block. Absolutely incredible run there. And then an easy run to finish up the week for an hour, wrapping up. The biggest week, 81.4 miles or 131K. And here we go then into the final two weeks, the final two week taper. So a nice easy run there. Short run so I don't miss the first Welsh goal. Come on Wales. So obviously that was a tournament or something. Uh, 5.55, um, 5.55 miles, uh, 723, 135 heart rate. Uh, so nice and relaxed there. Then a big session. And I have gotta be honest with you, I tell him every time he does his session, I love the look of this session and I really want to do this one day. Three by, 5k at marathon pace, 1k push, 1k float. So he does a marathon effort for 5k, he then pushes on for a k faster than marathon effort and then he floats for a k and he repeated that times three. Look at these 5k splits, a brilliant, he cut them down, average pace 527, again bang on the money. Uh, his k pushes were 312 and his floats uh, f um, 509 per mile and then the floats were 553. That's incredible. Um, covered 14.3 miles at 533 per mile in total, 168 beats a minute heart rate. That is an insane session. And then he did a cool down afterwards. Uh, then he did a double easy on the Wednesday, um, 124 heart rate in the morning, then ran with me in the evening, 128. So his heart rate is really coming down now. Uh, so that's great. Rested on the Thursday. And then he did 2K tempo. Uh, and then he did 10 by 400 meters as his final sort of like big session of, the, of that week. There is a taper session to come, but that's the last decent size session. Covered 8.43 miles, 150 beats a minute heart rate. Uh, was going to do a few more, but calf tightened up, so played it safe. So obviously his calf was a bit of an issue during this block, but he seemed to manage it well. Easy run in the evening, uh, 40 minutes, 131 and beats a minute heart rate, so nice and relaxed. Uh, legs feel heavy, but a week to freshen up, so a nice easy run there on the Saturday, 129 beats a minute. And then, uh, and then he put in a decent effort on the Sunday as well, seven weeks out, so 11.11 uh, 11 miles, uh, 554 per mile. 158 beats a minute heart rate. That is a solid run right there. 67 miles covered or 107.82K in that final, uh, the week before the penultimate week. And then we get into the final week. So easy Monday, 127 beats a minute heart rate. 141 uh, the on the Tuesday. So both of them uh, easy. One's low end easy, one's sort of top end easy. Taper session, two by a mile off 15 seconds turnaround. So he was trying to lock into marathon feel and rhythm. So a very short recovery there. Uh, and then he did a six fast out and back strides. So longer strides, he just hit the lap button when he felt ready. Uh, five miles covered, 646 per mile, 152 beats a minute heart rate. So a good little taper session then. The work is done, filming the final pre-race Valencia vlog on the Thursday, 130 beats a minute heart rate. Travels on the Friday, shake out, not really. I'll call it a shakeout, but he ran for sushi half a mile. He did half a mile 
the day before the race, 133 beats a minute. And then Valencia Marathon, 224.19. Io Scott overall, oh, I can't even say his name, Scott overall, so many pints, metronomic pacing, what a legend. So Scott overall, uh, UK distance runner, was pacing uh, a 224 group. Uh, ecstatic with that, marathons can always make me really emotional. So I'll leave it at that until I can compose myself. But thank you for every single person that sent a message of support in this block. You're all legends, five minute PB, get in. 26.4 miles, 528 per mile, 224 heart rate of an average of 170. And so I've noted down six talking points I want to share with you very quickly, some things that really jumped out at me in that training uh, that I want to talk about, highlight, and then create discussion with you guys. But let's just say, uh, out of the four training analysis videos that I've done, none of them have been the same, which is wonderful. I think it's so good to see such a variety of training going on out there and just shows you don't have to stick to one method. If one method doesn't work for you, there are plenty other ways to skin a cat, right? You can get to the same place by doing different types of training. Whether you think you're right or wrong, it just doesn't matter. There are plenty of ways. So let's dive into this and show you what my notes are and what I think were good, bad, and maybe he's going to want to change leading into this year. And what better place to start than the two marathons he ran in the build-up to this race? I want to focus on the Dublin one. So the, the one he ran with Kelly in Amsterdam. Uh, I mean, I know Matt and Kelly. They're a wonderful couple and they are so supportive of each other's goals. I'm sure you, a lot of you follow them on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, they're wonderful together and I'm sure it would have been amazing for Matt to be by Kelly's side when she obliterated her marathon PB and I'm sure it meant the world to Kelly for Matt to be there. Uh, so that is a, a wonderful thing. Uh, from Matt's heart rate perspective in the data, it's an easy effort so um, I don't really want to focus on that. It's the Dublin one. Uh, he put in a strong effort for 25k then he wanted to kick on. Now he ran that Dublin marathon seven minutes quicker, uh, slower I should say sorry, uh, than Valencia. So he obviously hit the sweet spot there, 116 high half for the first split, 114 high for the second half. And I feel like that was a very risk reward. It was either going to go Pete Tong or it was going to work really well. And it clearly worked really well. I've chatted to him since about it. It was an experiment he wanted to try. He wanted to go there, simulate race day, have no pressure on him. It was a secret that he kept to himself, flew over on the Saturday. And yeah, he just wanted to go out there, have a, have a strong 25K and then see what he could do in the second half. And it clearly worked well for him. He got a good training stimulus from that. The second thing is the really quality long runs that he's put in. We've not seen that in any of the three others that we have talked about. We have to a degree, but not to the way Matt has done it. So he's put a lot of Canova-esque workouts in there. If you don't know what I mean by Canova, Renato Canova is a coach and he has is very renowned for producing a lot of marathon workouts where you do big chunks of marathon pace uh, and then you float in between. Uh, it's all part of his philosophy of coaching. Uh, I love to do them. My old coach likes to do them. Uh, my new coach likes to do them. Matt likes to do them. And I know so many of you guys like to do them as well. They're a very, very effective way of training and getting your body in shape uh, for the marathon. Uh, so doing things like three by 5K, four by 6K, uh, even K on, K off, if they're controlled to the level that Canova would control them, it's all very much centered around that kind of getting used to marathon pace, working at marathon effort, and then floating the recovery is not an easy jog. So you're keeping the heart rate elevated, uh, effectively working harder for longer, but just giving your body enough time uh, to recover before going again into the next rep. So putting so much quality into his training with those long runs. If you look at the eight weeks in general, most of his quality came from those long run workouts. He did have, I'd say, an even split of speedier stuff in there as well, but I feel like he really got bang for his buck from those long run workout sessions. The third thing is he really does keep his easy runs easy. A little bit like Mike Co. you saw, and a lot of you commented, I can't believe how low Mike's uh, pacing was on his easy runs and his heart rate is very controlled. Matt is replicating that. He's doing exactly the same. He's not afraid to take his easy days easy. And for a 224 marathon, running a plus eight minute mile, so over five minute per K, and really keeping his heart rates in the 120s, sometimes in the one teens, and sometimes in the early 130s. He's very controlled about his easy days. There's no ego there. He just goes out and plods and runs, uh, very relaxed. And it's not this whole uh, marathon pace plus 90 minute, uh, 90 seconds 
distance and that's where your easy run should be he really does just kind of dial it back and take it easy lets his body recover as i said no egos there and it's really good to see number four the calf clearly plagued him during that build-up and i'm sure that's something he's going to want to rectify this year so that he doesn't get a repeat of that uh we know i left that note in on a few of the runs so you could see the pattern a little bit like ben when ben uh when i did ben felton's i left his notes in where he was struggling with a bit of a calf injury too um so if you notice there there was dotted in about three or four times where he said he was struggling with tightness in the calf or his calf was a bit sore uh, he got through it he trained well, he clearly managed it fine, but I'm sure that's something he would want to mitigate as well uh, in this next block and future blocks too. And the consistency in weeks one to four, I'm sure he'll want to address. Now, again, that's where the first two marathons were. So that's probably what catered or what happened with the 80, 50, 80, 45 week. I'm sure he would rather have had four 70 mile weeks back to back uh, than 180, 150, 180, 145. But as you can see there, after the Dublin Marathon, he took a couple of days off, which is very sensible. And again, the whole risk reward thing, was it worth going and putting that effort into then taking two days out of your training? I'd argue probably yes, because he ran the time he ran. He must have got an amazing stimulus from that run uh, and his body clearly adapted well to it. But you've got to remember, it does take it out of the training. And what you've always got to think in marathon training is just stacking day after day, week after week, month after month. That's what gets you to the place that you want to be faster. Um, so there's, as I said, there's a risk reward thing there. It clearly paid off, but you've got to bear that in mind. And of course, with the second week, I think it was where the mileage was a little bit down. He took the Friday and Saturday off there's no notes as to why but again I'm wondering if there was a bit of calf pain a bit of tightness or something there that meant he took the weekend off so I'm sure he'll want to address that consistency in future blocks and the sixth and final thing I think to highlight again is lifetime miles let's just bear that in mind now the build-up into these final eight weeks for Matt he didn't have massive weeks before that he had some races um, so he had similar sort of week build-up but of course Matt has been running uh, for as long as I have been running actually I think this is gonna be his tenth year of running and he's the same age of me so we literally started at the same time he's 36 years old um, so lifetime miles makes a massive difference and stacking marathon block on top of marathon block on top of marathon block also makes a big difference let's just bear in mind when he ran his original 229 I think it was like four maybe even five years ago I can't remember the exact number um, probably four years ago he's then run 229 since and the reality is he was probably in faster shape uh, on those races uh, than his race result gave him credit for just the races didn't go to plan so when Valencia happened it was this culmination of just months and years of amazing training stacked up and all he had to do in those final eight weeks was just do the right things in training to sharpen himself up keep that fitness going sharpen himself out up get that marathon training uh, marathon pace dialed in and just hopefully on the day execute the race that he did which is why it ended up in the result that it was. So there we go, massive kudos to Matt for another incredible marathon result. And as I said, if you don't follow him already, links are in the description for his channel. He's shooting for a sub 220 this year and he's already underway with his marathon, uh, Manchester marathon training. So go follow him on his channel. He's producing weekly videos over there again now. That's it from me today, guys. Anyone else you want me to analyze, drop a comment below. It'd be great to hear from you. I've put some polls out on the channel. It was great to see so many votes, over 850 votes uh, in the last one that's absolutely incredible so I'm going to be picking some more people to analyze and uh, if there's any elites out there that you want me to look at that do document their training on Star uh, Strava Connor Mance is one of them that I really want to dive into he ran a 207 at Chicago and all his trainings on Strava not hidden so I do want to kind of look at people like that so we can really see what the elites do uh, that really can benefit us me and you to help us improve our times as well that's it from me today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. I'll see you in the next one. Until then.